Does your agency use the psychological examination and the polygraph examination for new hiring process? Well, I know that Florida in some agencies we do. Each state is different and the laws in each state vary. However, for the state of Florida, I can tell you that the Florida Highway Patrol, the Florida State Troopers use the polygraph examination and the psychological examination for the hiring process. And then at the county level, the county sheriff's departments use the psychological examination and the polygraph examination for the hiring process. However, the state agency, Florida Department of Corrections, does not use either one. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I've been asked by many people. So let's discuss what these two examinations can do for your agency and what they can't do for your agency. Hi, I'm Gary York, True Prison Stories. Please subscribe if you like this video. I'm going to start with a psychological examination first, which is usually the last examination given in the hiring process. And the reason that is, is because it is more costly. So the agencies would rather you go through your physical agility test, your medical examination, your oral interview, and your polygraph first before they have a psychological exam done and they have to pay for that exam. That's the case in most states. I'd like to hear from all of you uh, what your state does in the hiring process. So in Florida, we have uh, the county agencies and one state agency, the Florida Highway Patrol, using these methods, but not the Department of Corrections. Now, who can use these exams? Well, it's mostly or just about all government agencies can from the federal, state, and county level. Private industries and private companies do not use these, and actually there's a federal law that says they do not, uh, you do not have to take one in the private industry. But why do some government agencies use them? Well, if you're in a position of public trust and you're going to be handling a weapon, such as corrections officers law, slash law enforcement, any uh, security, high security with a weapon, uh, you will be handling a weapon. And we want to know if you're stable enough and your emotions will allow you to handle a weapon and use good judgment. These tests are not foolproof. They're not guaranteed to work. But I, in my own opinion, believe they will weed out some of the bad apples. We're going to talk about how that works, how it will weed out some of the bad apples. I did speak with a director uh, of a jail, an administrator of a jail one time about these exams, and they're not foolproof. You will still have some bad apples slip through the process, even with the polygraph and the psychological examination. But you will get a lot of them removed before they get into the system, and we'll talk about that. Um, people who handle drugs, um, people who will be dealing with a lot of uh, illegal narcotics in their jobs. Uh, it can fall into the medical field as well. Uh, we'll be given these examinations. So those are the types of people that will uh, be receiving these types of examinations. Now, uh, the psychological evaluation can identify honesty or dishonesty in many cases aggressiveness or being overly timid and shy, uh, we need to know if you're suitable for law enforcement or corrections and if you can handle the stress of the job and the psychological exam can help in that area. Yes, we do have people that could take psychological exams and pass them every time and not be stable. Yes, we, that is true, but not a large percentage of them. Uh, we need to know, we need to try, before we hire, at least try to answer the one big question. Can we depend on you to do the job? And we will do a psychological exam. Now, what does that exam do for the agency? Well, it will be on file. It will show that if you commit a crime later on in your job or in your career, that at least the agency had 
the integrity to spend some money and do their best to weed out the bad apples. And they gave you a psychological exam. And that will be on record. So part of it is for the agency's protection. And let's face it, folks, just me here on the farm. If I hire somebody to work on this farm or be a foreman even, I want to know I can trust them. I want to know they can do the job. So I can't give them a polygraph, obviously, because I'm a, a private uh, person. But I can go down to the local sheriff's department and, and run a check on them, do some type of background check if I want, pay 4 or $5, and at least see if they've ever been arrested in my county. So, you know, any employer wants to make sure they're hiring quality employees. At least they're attempting to, to weed out the bad apples. So the psychological exam is usually mailed off. Uh, there's companies up in Minnesota that handle that. Many of the psychological exams uh, are out of a company in Minnesota that are being used today. And they can send the results back to the agency and say, are you an extrovert? Are you an outgoing person? Okay to be in public. Crowds don't bother you. Uh, or are you an introvert, you're reclusive, or you're a loner, or you're very, very timid, and, and crowds will bother you? That could tell the, the employer that for corrections and law enforcement, maybe you're not the best candidate. Um, it can tell a little bit about your personality, these psychological exams. Are you overly aggressive? Is there an anger management issue? Ding, ding, if, if, if a corrections or law enforcement agency sees that, as an indicator, they probably will set your application to the, to the side and not in the go pile. So it is a tool, the psychological exam, not foolproof, we know, but it is a tool. So why is it, for example, in Florida, our county agencies and our state highway patrol use it, but not the Department of Corrections where you have to uh, deal with inmates every day and deal with high stress and, and and be put in situations that could cause you to explode and overreact or use excessive force. So why don't some agencies use this as a tool? You know, I don't know why. And that is a question that we would have to ask them. And I'm asking you out there, why does your agency use them if you know? And why does your agency not use a psychological exam? if you know. Now we'll get to the very controversial polygraph examination and sometimes the CVSA, the controlled voice stress analysis machine, which goes by the fluctuation of your voice to see if there's stress in your voice. I don't particularly like that one. If I'm going to use one, I would rather use the polygraph examination. Now, the polygraph examination is where is an instrument, a diagnostic instrument that you are hooked to, which records your uh, physiological changes within your body, your stress, your nervousness. And it is not foolproof, we know. And here's some tests that have been recorded. Some tests have come back and shown that the polygraph examination is 85% reliable, some have said it's 90%, some have said it's 98% reliable. Uh, that's one reason it is not used in court of law, unless there's a huge exception and both the defense and the prosecutor allow it to come in and the judge allows it to come in. It can be done. Very improbable, very unlikely though, that you will see polygraphed test examinations used in court. They are used as a tool for hiring process and for investigators. I use the polygraph examination in many investigations. Yes, they were an exhibit in my investigation. The test results were an exhibit, but it could not be used uh, in criminal cases against you. It was a tool to try to at least tell me, am I headed in the right direction? And it's the same thing with the hiring process. The polygraph examination is a tool. It looks to me like you can say it has a 15 out of a, a, a percent out of a hundred percent uh, failure, 
15 people out of 100 is a lot to take a chance with. So the agencies use it as a tool, as a guideline. The test questions are yes and no, simple. So when you're taking a polygraph examination, answer yes, answer no, don't add anything, don't say anything, and just stay calm and be truthful. Because the actual key to the polygraph examination is not the test results of your yes and no answers, it's the interrogation afterwards. See, agencies like to use polygraph examiners who went to an accredited polygraph examiner school and they have their certification and they have some experience under their belt. For example, a county agency I just left uh, uses a polygraph examiner maybe once a week. He'll come into a room at the human resources office that is set up just for the polygraph examiner. Uh, he or she may be a privately owned run polygraph examination company, but they're contracted out by the county to come in once a week to do polygraphs on uh, new hirees, new applicants for the sheriff's department. And they'll get paid a, a fee. And when you do this, uh, many agencies get a huge discount for using the polygraph examiner once a week or once every other week to come in and do these polygraph exams because they're doing a bulk number of exams. So it's less costly for the agency, but it will still cost some money. Now, the polygraph examiner has to not only be able to know how to operate the machine and administer the test, but the polygraph examiner has to be a good interrogator and be good with interview questions. So if there's stress level showing on, have you ever stolen anything? And it shows you say no, and it indicates that you're being untruthful. Now a good polygraph examiner will interview the person and say, well, it, it indicates that, that you're not being uh, truthful and, and you have, have possibly stolen something in your life. Uh, you can explain, well, you know, when I was in the military, I did take home a pen every day or I took home a pad of paper from the military and you know, when you asked me the question, I thought, oh, no, it made me nervous. I, I did take something home that wasn't mine. But I did use it at home and then bring it back the next day because it was for work purposes, but I was still nervous about the question. I mean, that's just an example. Uh, but here's the key. After a person has failed a polygraph exam during the hiring process, many, many have come clean. Have you ever used drugs before? No. It indicates you're lying. And then when the polygraph examiner does a good interrogation, the truth actually comes out. And many people will tell the truth. Yes, I have stolen something before. It was this, it was that. Yes, I told you I didn't use drugs, but I, I have used drugs before. And, you know, here's the thing, folks. Many agencies have a leeway. If you smoke marijuana, if you have not smoked marijuana within the past three years or seven years or whatever their cutoff is, they will still hire you, you know. But if you lie and say, no, I have never uh, smoked marijuana, if that's the question, and then you have to come clean and say, yes, I have, you're probably not going to get hired. So if I'm asked, have you ever smoked marijuana, Gary York, I'm going to say, yes. My answer will be yes. After the polygraph examination is over, the examiner is going to say, Gary, it says you smoked marijuana. When was the last time? In high school. I did get with a group of people that smoked marijuana in high school. I did not start till 10th grade, and the last time I smoked marijuana was in 12th grade. Okay, Gary, thank you for that. Thank you for being honest. Now, I had, to t t I had to answer that question for the Army recruiter as well, and in my same answer, yes, I did smoke it in high school because I graduated high school and then went in the army and I was still able to become a military policeman. Oh, shock. Gary York used to smoke marijuana. Well, folks, the world is full of shocks. Here I am today and I can truthfully answer questions. I have never used hard drugs and I have never ever smoked marijuana since. So 
there's uh, the way the polygraph exam works. So you can have many variations to it, but the key to the polygraph examination is after the test, you have a good interrogator, a good polygraph examination who can dig deep and find out the truth. Now, what have we done? We have weeded out some bad apples because the interrogator found out that 96 people out of the last thousand people polygraphed have admitted and told the truth. And in some cases, the truth will still allow you to go on and be a corrections officer or law enforcement officer. And in some cases, it won't. So in my opinion, using the polygraph test and the psychological exam is still a good thing to do. The Border Patrol uses it, but the Border Patrol only uses the polygraph. The United States Border Patrol does not use the psychological exam. So there's another question for all you out there, or any of you that are watching this are in human resources or prison management and you're, you're going to hire people, or you're on the interview panel for new hirees. What would you do? Do you want both the polygraph examination and the psychological examination or neither? Or do you just want one? And if you went with only one of these two exams, which one would you prefer? The Border Patrol prefers the polygraph examination only, and that's what they use. They do a background investigation, of course, and you know the federal government's going to do a, a heavy background check. But uh, I, uh, for example, in Florida, the Florida Department of Corrections does not use either one. I think that's not good, especially with a lot of things that have been happening already in 2019 and in the past, I think you probably could have weeded some of these folks out that are presently being arrested right now in, in 2019 in the Florida Department of Corrections. I'm not going to get into that. It's an example I'm using. It's all over the news for people arrested in Lake Correctional. Now we have Lowell Correctional Institution Women's Prison where it is so far uh, alleged, nothing's been reported yet, that a um, 51 year old female inmate has had her neck broke and officers have been removed from supervision of inmates and they are being investigated. Uh, could these events be prevented or could we have weeded out some of those people that are being arrested before it ever got to this? My motto is pay me now or pay me later. Now, if you think it's a money issue, then legislation needs to come up off some money and pay the Department of Corrections folks some extra money or give them an extra fund somewhere for the psychological exam and polygraph examination. Because my question is, if the Florida Department of Corrections had these two tests in place, would some of these folks that are in trouble right now have never entered the corrections? That's my question. Okay, I'm not saying yes or no, I'm asking. My other uh, thing I want to point out is, pay me now or pay me later, when these type of investigations go on, and both the Lake Correctional case and the Lowell CI case are indicating that these investigations could go on for months and months, and more arrests could be coming in the future. So, you have agencies like the Inspe uh, Department of Corrections Inspector General the FBI, the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, all using manpower, time, and taxpayer money to investigate these crimes. Not even talking about when we go to court, there's going to be arraignments and pretrial hearings and motions and all types of hearings before it ever gets to trial if it does reach trial. More taxpayers' money. I really think that in the end you'll save money by using these two exams up front and maybe get rid of some of these bad apples before they get into the system. Very curious to know what your state agency does. Do they use both or do they use one or do they not use any? Very curious to hear your thoughts on whether these two examinations would help in your opinion in the hiring process of trying to weed out the bad apples and keep the quality applicants. And yes, let me add, if you're still with me at the end of this video,
because I have people that put comments on a lot of the sites. Well, what about better pay? You should have mentioned better pay. Well, I do always mention better pay, but you don't. You must not be watching to the end, and that's okay. Uh, I just want to get the gist of my idea out. So if you only watch the beginning, that's that's fine. But yes, better pay and these two examinations for the hiring process. Better pay will lure in better applicants in some cases, and these two exams will help get those better applicants. Thank you for watching Gary York True Prison Stories. Please subscribe.